With the plethora of platforms that offer labs to get you started in cybersecurity, you might find yourself confused as to what platform would best suit your needs and what exactly you should learn. I am here to help you ease that stress and hopefully save you a lot of time by providing you with a solid roadmap to get into security. Well, one people, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Tadi. I'm a security engineer focused on application security. That kind of sounds like repetition, but that's what it is. And today, what I have for you is a roadmap. This might turn into a series because there's a lot of information to digest, but for now, we will get into just the overview. So just a bit of background. I was working on a project at work with one of the senior engineers on our team. He has a GitHub repository and he showed us what we were supposed to look at. It was this OAuth stuff. And after that, I was like, let me look at the rest of their GitHub, right? What repos do they have? What tools have they built? And I bumped into this ultimate hacker roadmap repository. I was like, this is actually cool. Even though this is three years old, I think a lot of the information is still relevant and I'll be working with Kenneth to update some of the stuff and links to the resources just to make it a little bit more recent, even though I think it is still very relevant. So there's directories for clueless people, newbies, associate levels, mid levels and seniors. And if you go to the readme.md, it just says ultimate hacker roadmap. What's your hacker level? And this is just the overview of everything. There's clueless, which is unhirable. This is the place where you're absolutely dog shit at cybersecurity. You don't know anything. There's the newbies that make 30 to 50K, associates 80 to 90K. And I do not confirm nor deny that this is how much I make. There's mid-levels, 95 to 120K. And then seniors, 120K plus, right? This is just an estimate. There's obviously gonna be outliers in terms of like salaries and what people actually do. But if you use this roadmap, look at what you need to learn for each level, I guarantee you, you will be on a solid path compared to most people that just do random stuff. I didn't have a roadmap, I was just doing random stuff. And how did my earphones come off? This Anyway, I had no roadmap, I was just doing random stuff. And luckily I landed somewhere, but you, if you're starting out, get into this directory called Clueless. This is beginner level. Is this you? You're interested in computers and want a job dealing with computer network security service ETC. In the past, you've managed to log into the BIOS on your computer, install a new graphics card on your PC, and maybe you tore into the few movies from Pirate Bay. You're tech savvy, but you're not good enough to get an entry level position in IT, right? And then they go into a lot of specific stuff about what you should learn at this level, right? Basic BIOS configurations, hard drive basics, RAM, CPUs, CPUs, caching, common file extensions, all this stuff. It is a long list of things you would want to learn at this level. Right? And if we go back after your clueless, you become a newbie, right? At this point, you're like still script kitty. And uh, yeah, it says the newbies curriculum level one. So you've looked over the laundry list of technologies, concept in clueless level. And you said, yeah, I know all this stuff, right? Odds you are probably working in technical support role already and making upwards of $40,000 a year. Great, I'm here to finally level up your skills and get you out of that boring IT support role. No longer are you forced to deal with angry old men over the phone who can't access their email, right? That's really what support is. People calling you because they don't know how to restart the computer. Anyways, table of contents, there's a lot of stuff. Popular penetration dist distros, Parrot, I use Kali, ETC, web application tools, it dives into Wi-Fi hacking, things you should learn for reverse engineering tools, um, programming tools, miscellaneous stuff. And then you go into web applications, XML, JavaScript, cores. Cores is very important if you did not know, look into it. MVC models are very important as well for web application hacking, models, views, and controllers. Absolutely important, especially for some of the older web applications and CMSs, if they mess up that, ha, you've got a gold mine of security issues that you can report, right? Chorus headers, HTTP security headers, ETC, all the good stuff that you should actually learn. You can make your own checklist, remove some stuff that you might not be interested in, add some stuff, and trust me, you will land a position quicker than most people that just do random stuff. I did random stuff, right? And then associate level, you did it. You finally managed to get an actual job in security, right? I finally managed to get an actual job in security. Now we can look at some of the things I should focus on. 
you've already learned a great deal about web applications and can effectively test them for vulnerabilities as well as discuss modern remediations to clients. Great, now it's time to level up your reverse engineering skills, learn low level computation and memory management, mobile application security and discover ways to bypass modern OS level protections such as DEP, ASLR, and stack canaries. And so you just have to master the big four basically at this level. Get your hands dirty with network security, web applications, binary security, reverse engineering, and mobile application security, right? And then again, it goes into a lot of stuff you could learn. Um, these are penetration testing tools. If we go down advanced web exploitation, bypassing WAFs, malicious file uploads, uh, C++ programming essentials. Uh, I'm not the best at C, but we'll get there. We'll get there. And then advanced network based vulnerabilities. This was probably not complete. Um, reverse engineering, Indianness, big Indian, little Indian. I know some of that stuff. Uh, you find it usually in CTFs in the pwn section. That's how you usually learn some of these things. And I'll put a link to CryptoCats channel. He's very good with explaining some of this stuff. That's where I learned most of it. Miscellaneous fundamentals, mobile communications, mobile application security. There's the mobile OWASP top 10 just like there's the OWASP top 10 for web applications. Once we graduate from associate, we get promoted to mid-level. So from ASE, Associate Security Engineer, you move on to SE, right? Security Engineer, mid-level. Finally, we've weeded out the script kiddies and the newbies. We love them, we want the best for them, and they'll catch up eventually. You are not ready? This handbook is meant for currently employed penetration testers who are not entry-level and are making over 100K a year if you skipped over the monstrous amount of material in newbie and associate, then you should be researching the material in this handbook, unless you're just curious, of course. And I'm just curious, I'm not there yet. So let's look at some of the things we need to focus on so that we can graduate to SE. Web application security assessments, mobile network, they've added code reviews, code reviews, absolutely fine. If you were able to use the application. I know I did a code review where I wasn't able to even use the application that was absolutely boring and difficult uh but i did find some stuff anyways there's a couple of domains that are said you should focus on and the first one is cloud security it goes into aws cloud security you can also start with azure if you want and then the second domain is exploit development and there's a list of modern technologies out of time compilers just-in-time compilers etc and then there's bypassing modern exploitation prevention memory leak vulnerabilities bypassing nx bit no clue what that is bypassing aslr use after free and all that stuff so this is mostly just the technical stuff you should know at this level and uh once you've been in se1 se2 and then se3 you then be ready to move on to senior there's a description of what seniors really do if you're a senior then congratulations you probably have been in the field much longer than i have and i'm in no place to lecture you. I think Kenneth wasn't a senior at this point, but they are a senior now. Since this level is related to cutting edge research, much of the stuff I can hope to post here will be old news. I personally think staying involved in the cybersecurity community is where a senior is likely to going to put your attention. That is absolutely true. IMO. Conventions, security news, blogs, social media of other top hackers. At this point, I feel the responsibility to stay up to date with the latest cybersecurity breaches and news. And this was still in a work in progress, but you can see some of the stuff they list here about what seniors should look at. And like I said, there was a lot of detail in this GitHub repository. I'll probably turn it into a series. If you guys want me to let me know down in the comments, but do take a look at it. Use it to draw up your own roadmap. Don't take Kenneth's word for it. Don't take my word for it. Do your own research. And if you follow this to a T, maybe you probably get to landing a position quicker than a lot of people. But at the same time, do not neglect the social skills, right? Be likable, know how to interact with people. Apart from that, that is it for me. Like the video if you do find it helpful, maybe subscribe. Follow the socials, I'll link them down below. Peace.